Pastor Haida, it's Elisha. I welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to solve a couple of questions which the external candidates faced in 2023 mathematics grade 9 exams. Uh, let's take a right. So this is a question on bases, number bases. So they're saying find the product of 321.5 and 42.5, giving your answer in base 5. So <coughs> We have 3, 2, 1, and we have 4, 2. All these are in base 5. So we can either start with this one or start with that one, so that's that. So what we do is we multiply 2 by 1. Since the answer is less than the base we are dealing with, we simply write it the way it is. Then 2 times 2. That's actually a 4. 4 is less than this 5, so you can write it the way it is. 2 times 5, 2 times 3 rather, that is 6. Now 6 is greater than the base we are dealing with, so we have to divide 5 into 6. That's one remainder 1. Since there is no other number to multiply this, this side by 2, we simply write the one starting with this one. And we are done. We can now move on to this one. We are going to write a zero here for place value sec. Then we multiply 4 times 1, that's a 4. 4 times 2, that's 8. We divide the 5 into 8, that's 5 into 8, that's 1. Remember a 3. So what we are going to write is the remainder. And then we remember 1. 4 times 3. That's a 12 plus 1, that's a 13. 13 is greater than the best we're dealing with, so we have to divide the best we're dealing with into the answer. So 5 into 13, that is 2, remember 3. So now what we have is that. Is there any other number that you can multiply 4 by? No. So we start with the 3, then we write the 2. We can add the numbers 2 plus 0 to 4 plus 4, that's 8. So we divide 5 into 8, that's 1, we remember 3. So what you're going to write is a 3 there, and we remember 1. So 3 plus 1, that's 4 plus 1, that's 5. 5 into 5, 1, remember 0. So you're going to write a 0, and remember a 1. 3 plus 1, that's 4, plus that one, that's 5. Since the answer is equal to the best, we're going to divide the best into that number. We're going to have the same answer as this one. So we write a 0, we remember 1. Then 2 plus 0 is 2 plus that one, 3. So this is actually the, the, the answer that we find when we multiply these two number bases. And it's in this file. Let's move on and look at another problem. Okay, so now this one is a question on triangular prisms. So now the, the problem reads, the following diagram is a triangular prism, PTSQRU, in which PT is equal to QS, so that's PT and that's QS. Those two lines are equal. And they equate to 6 centimeters. Then they say TS is equal to UR, which is equal to PQ, which is equal to 10 centimeters. Given that the height of the triangular PUT is 2.6, Calculate the volume of the prism. So now what is very important here is knowing the formula of the prism. So the formula for finding the volume of a triangular prism is half BH L. 
So this one here is actually the base, and that one is the height of the base. So we are looking at this side, the base area. This one is actually the same as that one. So the base is this line, which is six centimeters. So we can quickly collect the data, say B is equal to six centimeters. Then height is equal to 2.6 centimeters. How about L? L is actually the longest side here, which is the length. So L is equal to, when you check here, what do you get? You get 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters. So we can plug in all those values into that equation and then we find the answer v is equal to half what's the best that's six times uh, two point six then times ten okay so now what we can do is we can say let's find the answer here so if we use the lattice method that's a two that's a six and then we're multiplying by six we ignore the decimal point, so that would be, let's divide this. 6 times 6, 36. 6 times 2, that's a 12. So you now have 6. And that's a 5. 3 plus 2, 5, then we have 1. So the answer is 156. But, remember that when we were multiplying out those numbers, there's one number which had a decimal point. So what we do is we consider this decimal point and it will be the we will actually take it that this, the decimal point is at the far end there. And since we have one decimal place, it will be here. So we're gonna have volume which is equal to half times uh, 15.6 times 10. Times 10. So we can do this. Volume is equal to 15.6 times uh, 5. What then will be the answer? We can use the lattice method again just to find the answer. Okay. So how do you go about this one? We will, we will say. Since there are three digits, we're going to draw three boxes. Then we segment them, this one, that one, and that one. Then on top, we write one, five, six, multiplied by five. So four, five times six, that is 30. Five times five, 25. Five times one, that's five. We write a zero there. From here, we can now add the numbers. That's zero. That's eight. That is seven, that's a zero. So what we have, if we collect the numbers from here to there, that would be zero, seven, eight, zero. Now we go back to the original numbers, those that we had multiplied by. We check how many decimal places were there, one. So the decimal point to move once, and we're gonna have 78. What will be, that will be 78 cubic centimeters. So that is the answer, that is the answer. Let's move on to the next question. All right, so the next question has to do with linear inequalities. Uh, you can actually illustrate those inequalities on the X or Y plane. So we have this problem here, which says illustrate the solution of let me plot this inequality. Can also go into an inequation. So that's what we have now. We need to show that on the X or Y plane, and then we have to shade the wanted region. So how do you do that? You first of all have to plot the graph of that inequation. So how do you do that? You come up with a table of values. 
Come up with a tip of violence. So this one will be named as X, that one will be Y. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it that if X is zero, what can we be Y? So we pick on this one, say Y, and then formulate an equation out of that. We get rid of the inequality symbol and substitute it with an equal sign. If X is zero, what to be Y? So when there is X, we plug in a zero minus two. So if x is zero, y will be negative two. So we write the value of y. We can now determine the value of x by presuming that y is zero. So we're gonna say if y is zero, what then will be x? So this inequation here will be written as an equation. So it'll be y is equal to x minus two. So now whether is y, we're gonna plug in a zero. Zero is equal to x minus two. What then will be the value of x? So bring it on that TV inverse this side, this side as well. So this one will give us a zero, because negative two plus two, that's a zero. So x will be 2. So x will be positive 2 when y is equal to 0. So now we can plot these points that we have. We have 0, 2, 